Welcome to part number 10 of the Godot Tower Defense series. In this tutorial, we'll have a look at how we can add muzzle flashes to our gun turrets, and we'll add an animation on the tank for the impact. Let's get started. The very first thing we're gonna do is add a muzzle flash to the gun, and of course, we're gonna need a sprite for that. I'm gonna open up in our assets folder where you downloaded all the packs in the past tutorials. I'm gonna go open the Tower Defense Top Down 300 Assets Pack and we're gonna to go to the PNGs. We'll take the default size PNGs and we scroll all the way down. And here I'm gonna use this PNG, Tower Defense Style 297. It's a thin muzzle flash, which I've picked on purpose because as we're gonna upgrade the gun tier one to gun tier two, we're gonna have two barrels very close to each other. And this sort of narrow muzzle flash, make sure that they are not gonna overlap. Of course, you're gonna take this image and you're gonna put it in your assets folder. I'll do that in the effects folder. Here you can see it on the bottom left in the file manager. I've created a new folder effects in the assets folder. And here we've got the tower defense tile 297, that muzzle flash that we'll be adding into the game now. Next, we wanna open up our gun tier one scene. I'm gonna scroll down to scenes, to turrets, to gun tier one.tscn. In here, we have the muzzle 2D position we already added in a previous tutorial. This is where we'll add a child note We'll add a sprite. We'll change the name of the sprite to muzzle flash. And of course, in the texture parameter on the right hand side in the inspector, that is where we're going to drag our new muzzle sprite. Now, this looks horrible, so we're going to transform it a little bit. I'm first going to scale it down to 70% of its original size, otherwise, I think it's too large. And we'll add 90 rotation degrees to put it in the right direction. Now, of course, it's on the barrel, so I'm going to give it an X position of 10, and that puts it at the end of the barrel. That's perfect. Now, you want to animate it. For animations in Godot, you basically have two ways you can go with the animated sprite and you can go with the animation player. The animation player is the much more powerful tool. The animation sprite is also a little bit worse in performance. So the animation sprite is pretty much like uh, only use it for very simple stuff. We will be using the animation sprite later in this tutorial for the actual impact animation. So you can see how both work. For now though, we're gonna go with the animation player. We right click the uh, gun tier one, the main node of the scene. We add a new child node and we'll add an animation player to it. In here, you got this whole animation player popping up. You can open and close this with uh, animation here on the bottom. And the first thing you wanna do is add a new animation. So we click animation, we click new, and we'll give it a name. And let's just call this fire. Now, right now on the right hand side, there's a lot of options here. I'll walk you through it. Uh, on the right hand side, you see this one. This is how long the animation is gonna last. One second, that's way too long for a muzzle flash. So we'll change that in 0.05. Now, it might be that the timeline on the top here indicates like 13, 14 seconds, 10 seconds. On the bottom right here, you see the skill uh, indicator. This allows you to scale the timeline so that you can zoom in on that very short animation that we're working on right now. The snap here is where our keys are gonna snap. And since we have an animation of 0.05 seconds, a snap of 0.1 is not gonna help us. So we'll change this into 0.05. Now we can add a track and you can add all kinds of tracks. You can need 3D transforms, you can call methods, audio playback. And of course the audio playback is gonna be super useful once we start adding sounds. So that's why using the animation player here is really handy. For now though, we're gonna go with a property track. A property track allows you to change any property of any of the nodes that are in this scene. So right here we see this pop-up, which is basically a copy of the scene tree that you see on the, back, uh, on the background there. And of course we want to animate our muzzle flash. Now we get a new pop-up and these are all the parameters that we could change on this particular node. And we're gonna be looking for the canvas item category and we want to change the visibility. So we're gonna open that up. Now we're gonna right click and insert a key at the start and we're gonna right click and insert a key at the end. Now you can select these keys and we're gonna select the first one and the value on, that's good. And on the last one, we want the value to be back off. And then by default, we're gonna turn the muzzle flash off its visibility with that little icon right there in the uh, scene tree explorer. So what happens now, once we play this animation, it will, this animation player will turn the visibility on 
and after 0 0.05 seconds, it will turn it off again. And that is, of course, going to show us the muzzle flash that we're looking for. All that's left now is to make sure we add some code that is going to activate this animation as the gun fires. To do this, we're going to switch to the script on the top here. And we don't want this big animation editor to be in our view all the time, so we'll close that by hitting animation down below there. We're first going to switch to the turrets.gd script where we actually have our fire function. Here we do the function fire and of course right after we have set ready to false and just before we're going to hit the enemy we want to play that animation or start that animation. Of course now immediately we run into a problem because we're going to have both gun turrets which bullets travel so fast that the eye can't see them and we're going to have these missile turrets that are going to be having missiles shoot over the map. In other words, these two animations are completely different, so we probably want to categorize our turrets so that we know which animation we have to play for each turret. Now, we don't want this categorization to go as far as each specific turret, because a gun tier 1 and a cannon tier 1 and tier 2 and tier 3 are pretty much all going to have a fire animation. Um, so we probably have to differentiate between these categories as guns or projectiles and missiles. However you call these categories is up to you. For that reason, under the game data, I've already added the category variable to both of these missile tier 1 and gun tier 1 turrets. So here I'm going to go for projectile missile, even though a missile is a projectile, but you know, deal with it, I guess. If you want to change the names, no problem, go ahead. Don't forget that little comma behind the range 550 and 350 there, otherwise the dictionary is not going to be correct. Now that we have the category in our data, we can actually do something with that. And similar to how we have set the type of the turret in the previous tutorial, we can do exactly the same for the category. So we're going to say new tower, we're going to call category, and we're going to say you are equal to the game data, the tower data, the build type of the tower. And of course, we want to retrieve the category variable that's inside that dictionary. That means, as we're trying to set the category variable of the turret, that our turret needs to have a category variable right there, otherwise there's nothing to set. Now we know what type our turret is. And I'm going to be copy-pasting in over this fire function so that we don't have to code all of this. These four lines here, 36 to 39, are new, and these two functions are new. So what's happening is that we're checking if the category is equal to projectile, or another name if you've chosen another categorization. In that case, we're going to fire a gun type of turret. And otherwise, if it's missile, then we're going to fire a missile. Now, under the fire gun, we can say that we're going to get the note. We're going to get the note animation player. And we're going to play fire. And play is, of course, a function of the note type animation player. Now, if we hit play on the game or go new game, we'll paste or paste, we'll build our couple of our turrets. And as we play this, you can now see that our guns are having that muzzle flash. The only downside right here is that the muzzle flash is underneath the tank. So let's quickly fix that. That's quite easy. We can go to our map. So I think we call that map one. You can use that search bar right there in the file explorer. And as we open up our maps, we can see that paths where tanks are going to be added is below turrets, which means that they are rendered last and therefore the tanks are driving over the muzzle flash. We want the turrets to be below the paths so that the muzzle flash is going to be rendered above the tank. Now, if we hit play again, and I'll just place one turret so you can see this carefully, we'll hit play and you'll see, be able to see that this muzzle flash is now going over the tank instead of it being under the tank. So that is looking pretty neat. Now we got to add that impact animation on the tank and we want to add some randomness to it so that the impact is not going to be shown at the same location every single time. All right, for the impact animation, we of course again are going to need some sprites. So let's get them out of the folder. This time though, we're going to use the top down tanks redox folder because it has a better impact animation than the tower defense one has. So in top down tanks redox, we're going to go to PNG default size. And when you scroll down here, you can basically see two different animations. One is more like a fiery kind of animation, more explosion like, I guess. And the other one is more smoky like. Pick the one that you like more, uh, or maybe you want to add both for different turrets that you've already added to the game as you expanded on the tutorial. I'm just going to go with the explosion because, well, I don't know, maybe uh, my, my guns are shooting explosive rounds. So 
like that. I'm gonna go back to my game folder. Um, to record, to assets, to effects. And I'll throw my five animation frames in the same folder as we have added the muzzle flash. Just like that, we can go back to the scene and we're gonna be looking for our blue tank. We'll open up our blue tank scene and here's where we wanna add that animation. First, we wanna add a position 2D to the blue tank. That is the location where our impact animation needs to appear. We're gonna rename that to impact. Now impact with transform, we're gonna give a location of minus 15 by minus 15. So that brings it in the corner of the tank there. And you might be wondering, well, why do we do that? Because I don't want the animation to appear there all the time. Through code in a moment, we'll add a box of randomness. And that box of randomness is going to be determining where the animation spawns. But every single animation needs to have an anchor. And this position 2D functions as that anchor. Now that we have that, we can work on our animated sprite. So we'll add a new child node, and that will be an animated sprite. Now I'll say it again. I would normally, if this was my game, I will take the five sprites of our explosion. I will use a program called Texture Packer. They have a free version as well to create a single PNG. And then with the animation player, I would cycle through the frames as the animation player is more powerful and it's also a little bit more performance friendly. However, I want to teach you every single tool that Godot has to offer. Well, not in this tutorial series, but on my channel so that you have more tools to build awesome games. So we'll use the animated sprite for now. With the animated sprite selected, we're going to go to the top um, a parameter here, frames in the inspector, and we'll select new sprite frames. Then when that's done, we we'll click one time into it with the left mouse button, and that will open up this sprite frames editor. Now we have to find our animation sprites. So that are these five right here. And if you ever use this in the future, make sure you name these or give them the same name. We have like a number so that Godot can put them in the right order automatically. So as we drag these in, this is automatically the right order of the animation. We probably want to call this a little bit different. So we'll just call this impact. Now currently loop is on. You can see that on the bottom left right there. And we play this animation through the play parameter right here. Of course, this animation is way too big, so we want to scale this down a little bit. I'm going to probably scale this down quite a bit to probably 20% of its original size. Now with playing on, you can see that it's probably a little bit too slow. If a lot of turrets were to be firing at this tank at the same time, then all these explosions are going to be lingering. It's not going to look great. So with the speed skill here, we can speed this animation up. And I think a speed skill of four is probably going to be good. It seems really fast, but we want this to be really fast because we don't want this explosion to sort of linger while the tank is driving. That, that's not going to look nice. Okay, now that that's done, we can turn playing off. We can reset the frame to be frame number zero. And of course, we're gonna turn that loop off because the impact is a single time. So with this, it's pretty much done. Next thing we do is we wanna rename our animated sprite. So this is gonna be a projectile impact. We probably create a different impact for a missile. And we now we want to delete this projectile impact from the scene. And we wanna delete it because of course, now the tank would spawn into the world with this animated sprite on top of it, and that's not going to look nice. We want to instance in a version of this animated sprite every single time that a tank is hit by a gun. To do that, we're going to right click the projectile impact animated sprite node, and we're going to save this branch. Well, it's not a branch really, it's just a single node, but we're going to save that as its own scene with the save branch as scene. I'm going to save this under my scenes folder in the support folder. I mean, it's not a map, not a main scene, not an enemy, not a turret. The support scenes, is that's where I created this folder for. It's basically those little things that are just handy to have on the side. And we'll save that. Now that we have saved that as its own scene, we can now delete the node from the scene tree here. We're now gonna find this projectile impact scene, double click, and we'll add a script to it so that we can give it a little bit of code. Before we give it code though, we're going to select the projectile impact node. We're going to go to the node signals and we're going to right click our animation finished. We'll connect that to our projectile impact script we just created. Now I'll select all of this and I'll paste in the code that I prepared. We basically have two functions with just one line of code. Real easy here. We have a function ready at which point we're going to set playing to true. So it's going to play the animation 
And then as soon as the animation has finished, it's gonna pre-free itself and then the animation is gone from both the scene as well as the scene tree. Now, of course, we need a lot more code to actually make this animation sprite work, especially with the randomness and the location. So let's get into that. The rest of the code to get that animation correct is going to be on the tank. So we're gonna to switch to the blue tank script. Of course, if you don't have it in that list anymore, you can always find it through your file manager and open up your blue tank.gd. In here, we wanna have two things on the top. First, we wanna have an easy reference to our impact node, similar to how we have created an easy reference to our health bar. So on ready, var, we're gonna say the impact area is going to be the get node, and we'll simply drag our impact node to the code editor or script right there. The next thing we want is we wanna have an easy reference or a preloaded reference actually to that projectile impact scene because we don't wanna load it again and again at runtime. That's a little bit less performance friendly. By preloading it, we're just gonna put it by default in the memory, but that doesn't really matter. It takes up a very small amount of space, but it's gonna make sure that we have less lag in case you ever play this game on a less powerful machine. So for that, we're gonna say var projectile impact is going to be equal to, and then we preload that scene. For that, of course, we have to find the scene projectile impact and make sure you drag the TSCN, not the script. You wanna have the full scene and we'll drag that in there. Now, next up, as soon as this turret or the, sorry, this turret, this tank is hit, we wanna run the function impact. And of course, that means we need a new function impact and I don't have to write that down. I got that on my, for impact, there's a couple of things to unpack here. First up, what are these randomize commands? Randomize is randomizing the seed of the random number generator. If you are going to be asking the random number generator the same thing two times in a row or 100 times in a row with the same seed, you're going to get the same outcome. And as we're basically asking the same thing, we see Randy31 here two times, we want to make sure that both of those are having a different outcome and therefore we randomize the seed. Now, what this actually is, this is the X position and the Y position that we're going to be combining together in a vector two to actually create a position. Randy is basically going to return us an integer between zero and the value that we have added minus one. Randy basically works a little bit like indexes in arrays. Instead of starting at one, it starts at zero. So because it starts at zero, any number that we give it deducted by one is how far it can go up. It's a little bit of a thing as you just have to remember. So with 31, we're gonna get a number between zero and 30. We do for that for X and for Y, we create the impact location. Next, we're gonna pull an instance from our, our projectile impact. So we're gonna pull an instance from the scene here. We're gonna set the position of that scene to the impact location we have just defined. And then we're gonna add, take the impact array and we add a child to it. In other words, we're adding that animated sprite to the impact node, just like we had the animated sprite uh, added there a moment ago before we deleted it again. Now, the impact is currently, if we switch back to 2D real fast, at minus 15, minus 15. And as we add these animated sprites to it, they are going to be taking the position of impact as basically their anchor, their reference. And from there, they can be randomly 30, up to 30 pixels more to uh, the right or 30 pixels more down. So in uh, the most extreme case, if the randomization turns back 30 in both cases, this is basically going to be 15, 15, and then the animated sprite is going to be appearing right there. So now we're covering the entire tank randomly with uh, uh, impact animations. Make sure you do set this back in case you were uh, uh, playing around with that. And now when we play the game, we should be able to see that our tanks are being impacted by the fire of these turrets. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Now, as we play that game, we'll see the tanks rolling in. And as these guns are firing at random locations in that impact area, you see the animation appear. Now we're almost there. There's two small issues that we have to address. The first problem is then when we give our turret just 20 damage and a tank 60 HP, you'll see that the muzzle flash out of the barrel is still in place while the turret is already switching towards the next tank. 
it's very uh, uh, short that you have to see it. But now you'll see the muzzle flash is still animated in one direction while the barrel is already pointing towards the next tank. The second problem is that when the tank dies, it instantly deletes itself. And as a result, the impact animation doesn't show anymore. Let me see, uh, show you what I mean. On the third shot on this tank, you'll see no impact animation, tank immediately gone, and that doesn't look as good as it could look. So these are the two problems, we'll address them now. Our first problem with the muzzle flash is quite an easy fix. We're gonna switch the gun tier one scene, and we're gonna select the animation player. With the animation player selected, we're gonna increase the animation time to 0.15 seconds. We're not changing anything with the keys, we're just gonna make sure this animation just lasts 0.1 of a second longer. Also, when you make any changes here, sometimes this muzzle flash suddenly reappears again. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if you just uh, unselect it again or make it invisible again and save the scene, that problem should be gone. If it ever comes back, we'll just have to make sure we set the muzzle flash to invisible at the start of, uh, of the turret when we build it. Um, I think that's not necessary. I prefer not to have that line of code, but uh, if so, then we'll change it in a future tutorial. Now that the animation takes a little bit longer, we're gonna to go to the script. We're gonna to go to the turret.gd script here. When we turn the turret, we're gonna add one more line of code here. We're gonna say, if not, so if it is not the case, get node animation player is playing, then we turn. So because we are playing the animation for 0.1 second longer, and here we're checking if the animation is playing, and only if it's not playing, we're gonna be turning, the barrel will stay with the animation for just a little bit longer before switching to the next tank. And that way our muzzle flash is now going to be corrected. Now, next up, for the tank actually disappearing before we can show the last impact animation, we're gonna switch to the blue tank scene. And with the blue tank scene, we're gonna take the sprite that is currently a child under the kinematic body. We're gonna take that out and put it under the path follow 2D and we'll drag it above the health bar to make sure that they render in the correct order. Now, with this done, we can go to the script of the blue tank itself. And right here, we're gonna say that we're gonna get the node, and we're gonna get the node kinematic body. We are gonna query free that kinematic body. Then we'll yield the code for just a moment. Uh, we yield the code by getting the tree, by creating a timer. That timer will probably be 2.0 seconds, and we'll wait for the timeout to finish or to occur, and then we'll self query free. What happens now? is that as we are deleting the kinematic body instantly, the kinematic body is going to be gone from the range area to the of the turret. In other words, the turret is not going to continue firing on this tank any longer. But as we keep the tank for 0.2 seconds in the game, we have the ability to show the impact that is on the impact node right there. That is allowed to finish, that's allowed to play, and as that has finished our playing, then we can self cree free this tank from the entire scene and thereby freeing those resources. Now, of course, to make the last demonstration extra cool, I'm gonna give the tank a thousand HP. We are going to uh, our game data and we're going to increase the rate of fire of the turret by making it fire every 0.3 seconds. And now as we play the game, new game, we should be able to place a couple of turrets and with all these fixes in here and a lot of turrets, we can now see our work. And that is looking pretty sweet, if you ask me. Awesome. That was it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I think it's always really cool when you've worked hard on the code, you add the visual effects, and then it all comes together. So hats off to you for uh, sticking with the series so far. And uh, I hope you like the effect that we've coded today. If you did, then smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. In the next video, I'm not sure yet what we're gonna do. It's either gonna be one of two things. On one side, we may be programming the, uh, the missile animation. So we got missiles flying over the map. That would be pretty cool. But I also wanna work maybe on the HUD so that maybe we have an HP bar of the player itself. We know when a tank reaches the end, we deduct some HP. And of course, we need some currency in the system so that when you build a turret, you deduct some currency, and when you kill a tank, you get some currency. So it's gonna be either one of those two tutorials you'll see next week. And until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.